Um, the next thing that Deacon does is, is, is explain to us the particular types of learning, what, I guess disabilities or learning uh, limitations that children have and how those actually match the way in which language functions or the language is, needs to be learned. The first thing he indicates here is that <coughs> the overall structure of a language is learned as a complete system, which is to say it functions, he says, it's, he says that it functions, like a language functions like an organism in the same way that like an organism can begin kind of as an kind of embryonic, in an embryonic stage that is still kind of fully functioning in a, in a sense, that has all the different basic structural pieces of the organism but haven't been developed yet, that a language also has that that possibility of existing as a kind of simple, in a simple state, but that still functions, right? A and that because of that, children can learn this kind of, I guess, simple version of a language at an early l age at that, and th that still functions as a symbolic system, but is, is relatively simple for them, um, and that as they grow, they can kind of add complexity and detail to that basic structure, right? So, he, so he's saying, you know, this is, goes back to the way he, we, he talked about a symbolic system being something that could be, could be simple, right? So the, the chimpanzee example gave us an example of a very basic symbolic system. We recall six words, two rules, right? Uh, a distinction between verbs and nouns, right? And that's basically all you need to have a basic symbolic system. And that's something that a child can learn. That, that level of complexity is both enough to be a symbolic system, but yet simple enough that a child can still learn. And in fact, what he's indicating is that even when children hear more complex sentences, they, they kind of filter out the complexity and just sort of see the basic structure. Right? Um, and so, you know, he's seeing then the grammar of a language as the, as the basic structure that can exist in this simple form, um, and then uh, that's the form in which it has to be learned by children. And then, he, you know, he indicates then that, um, that this language structure is linked then to the way in which it's learned. And so, so that, that because children need to learn something simple, language has to be structured in a way that's easy, easily reducible to a kind of simple system, right? So, um, so and, and in fact here, you know, he's, he's saying that, you know, the way, the way that universal grammar functions, the way language is structured is not something that's predetermined in the brain, but rather it's something that's determined by the way in which it has to be learned. Right, so that there's a there's a relationship between language structure and the style of learning that's needed in order to learn language, or or the kind of learning constraints that children have when they're learning language. Right, so that the fact that that young children have these learning constraints is going to be defining for the way language is going to be structured. Right, um, let's see. Yeah, so, so in a sense, what he's saying then is that there's this selection pressure on language as an, if you think of language as an organism, there's this sort of selection pressure on language to, to have structures that, that can be interpreted as simple even if they can lead to more complexity later on. Or even if, if, it, even if it's a complex sentence, that it can be interpreted in a way um, that seems simple, right? So, so, so that, that, that's, that's his explanation for that tree structure of language, or that phrase structure, in which you can have a, a pretty complex sentence that you can still reinterpret as a very simple one, as really having two parts. And, and all you have to know is the two parts, and you have sort of the, the, sort of the gist of the sentence, even if the sentence is much more complicated, even if it's got, you know, whatever, it's, whatever. 15, 20 words, you can still reduce it to a basic tree. And that ability to reduce complexity to, to, to a simple structure that's still a symbolic structure is perhaps necessary for language because that's what's necessary for a child to be able to sort of take a complex 
sentence and still be able to make something out of it, even if it's not, doesn't have the complexity uh, of the original sentence, right? Um, and so what he's indicating then also is that the, 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 the learning limitations that children have might actually be an advantage in learning language. And this is his explanation for how it is that children are so good at learning language, but adults are not so good. Um, and he's, he, what, he's, what he indicates here is that the particular limitations that children have, uh, kind of poor memory, they have a short attention span, those might actually be advantages in the early acquisition of language because if you, if you, if you kind of, you know, if you, if, <coughs> if, you, if you can't pay attention to much detail, you don't remember things, then you're, you're liable then, and you're not really concerned uh, about, uh, about all the details, then you're, you're less likely to uh, obsess about sort of understanding every single word and being able to fit everything in a kind of an associative context. All you need, all you're maybe going to be interested in is sort of seeing the big picture pr phrase structure. And that's what's important in that initial learning of language as a symbolic system. So if, if you recall with our monkeys, right, uh, what was important was they, you, they had to kind of get away from kind of constantly memorizing specific associations. And they had to kind of get this big picture view of saying, oh, there's this relationship between the signs to each other, and that's what's really important. And, and that's something that's actually fairly simple and easier to learn if you forget about all the detail, right? Uh, and, 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 and actually, it actually is probably easier to learn if you don't have a very good memory, because all you're going to remember are sort of the, the, the main items, right? And so he's indicating here that learning a symbolic system requires that ability to, to ignore details of these word object associations until you've learned the kind of overall symbolic uh, structure of relationships. And so that becomes then his argument for why it is that children can learn language so well and then adults can't, right? And also uh, why there's this kind of window of, for children of learning uh, a mother tongue and that, you know, there are these, these cases of people like, uh, who, who, you know, who don't start learning language until much later and then never ever really develop that. And you know, Pinker had explained that as sort of a kind of language module that kind of turns off at a certain point. And, uh, and Deacon is really explaining that as just the fact that once, once these children's minds develop more and they, have, they, they develop a better memory and attention span, those characteristics that, that would normally seem to be good are actually a, a disadvantage for those early stages of learning a language. Right, so that he's, he's indicating that, that language learning actually doesn't require kind of general intelligence, but a very specific set of learning biases uh, of, of sort of kind of patterns of learning that are kind of limited, but are limited in a way that helps in making that leap from indexical to symbolic learning. Right? Um, so, so the deficiencies of children are, are in fact characteristics that language has had to use or ha has had to develop to take advantage of, right? So uh, first of all, I guess there is an advantage sort of, he's, he's, he's demonstrating how there is an advantage um, of children bands for learning language. And then he's saying, well, because of this, and th that language itself is also having to evolve in order to favor this sort of early acquisition of language. And so language, it, the structures of language are all, have also been adjusted in order or, or had to kind of arise as structures that could be learned uh, better early on rather than, than later on, right? So, um, so again, you know, the emphasis is on the difficulty of symbolic learning and the kind of shift in perspective that it's requiring uh, rather than on, you know, kind of the having a, a kind of pre-programmed module in the brain that would have language structure um, programmed into it, rather this language structure is something that that language evolves to 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 develop according to these um, to these constraints that are set by the child's brain, right? Um, so.